Good morning, everyone. My name is G. De Leon from Digital Philippines, and I will be your voiceover host for today. Thank you for joining us in this webinar. And for those of you who are watching through our live streaming link, welcome to the Road to Philippine Fintech Festival, Philippines and Cambodia webinar session. Today's discussion is a sneak peek into the country partnerships and topics that will be tackled at the inaugural Philippine Fintech Festival happening on October 17 to 21 at the Green Sun Makati, the home of Digital Filipinas. Our event today is co-hosted by Dig Digital Filipinas, the largest private sector-led movement, championing nascent technologies and cross-border collaborations to tech up the country, which is also staged to mount the inaugural, inaugural Philippine FinTech Festival that is said to be the country's largest digital economies festival. Together with our partners from the Cambodian Association of Finance and Technology, or CAF, this webinar will enjoin the discussion about how the industries of fintech, banking, and tokenization of real estate rally the agenda of digitalization across startups and various government institutions through the lens of the industry leaders. To start, I would like to welcome our Digital Filipinas and World Fintech Festival Philippines convener, Fintech Philippines Association, trustee and executive director, and Geyser Maklang Communications co-founder, Ms. Amor Maklang. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat and good morning to our friends, uh, both in Cambodia and also in the Philippines. I would like to make a special shout out to our friends here, uh, both Sanjay of the Cambodian Association of Finance and Technology, and of course, Thomas, who I regularly co-advocate with, with regards to issues in the region, both in CAF and also in uh, the Global Impact FinTech. Today marks a special point in the relationship for digital economies and fintech for both of our countries because uh, we are celebrating two milestones over the next 30 to 45 days. The Philippines kicks off the One ASEAN uh, Fintech Month uh, from October 17 to 21. And interestingly enough, it is bookended and the party ends in both Bali and also in Cambodia. This is perhaps the first time that we are receiving and welcoming Cambodian fintechs, technologists, and businesses to formally come to the Philippines in the spirit of collaboration and co-creation. Similarly, Thomas and Sanjay, you have our commitment that in the coming CamTech there will be even a modest delegation of Filipino technology startups and fintechs to come and support you. ASEAN is the largest, is the largest fintech in the world. It's not one entity, but it is a region. And I think it is the first time uh, that the leaders of these various associations are working very closely together to push an ASEAN agenda and to help encourage the rest of the world to look at our region, not just from a business, an investment, and also an engagement perspective. It is our honor to present to you um, very briefly the agenda for the Philippine FinTech Festival in a nutshell. Would you guys please uh, boot up the agenda? I'll, I'll breeze through it very quickly. So, I know it's extraordinarily small. It is almost impossible to compact all the issues that are important for us in the region when it comes to digital economies, uh, but also those that are relevant to the Philippines. So like I said, October 17 to 21 kicks off uh, the festival that will bring us afterwards to Thailand, to Cambodia, to Singapore, and also to Indonesia. I would like to encourage everyone to take a look at the festival in terms of four day parts. The first part being in the morning is the World FinTech Festival Philippines and is a continuation of the advocacy of the Monetary Authority of Singapore and Elevandi in creating digital economies advocacy throughout the world. 
our panel is uh, led by close to 200 leaders in ASEAN and also in the Philippines. Some of the highlights are Prudential, um, Ant, Tencent, uh, Crypto.com, and of course, the biggest players and leaders in the Philippines in the digital economy space. We will deal with things such as tech for government, tech for good, sustainability, uh, green financing, um, and of course, there's going to be an ASEAN FinTech Ask Me Anything, where we hope to have Sanjay or Thomas or both. The second day, we celebrate everything related to digital assets, blockchain, and of course, keeping it safe and secure through cybersecurity. We will have an embedded blockchain and decentralized asset summit chaired by coins.ph. Also on day one, we are going to have an embedded cooperative summit because when people talk about some quick cute quirk about the Philippines, when people talk about uh, that the Philippines is unbanked, what it really means is the, the money is partly with the cooperatives. Day three is all about the future of wallets, their journey towards being a super app, and of course, the, the harnessing of AI and big data. We have, we have a summit related to entrepreneurship um, and also the taking up of the finance and the, the finance sector in the Philippines. The last day is going to focus on um, our newest pride and joy, the launch of the six digital banks in the Philippines. I always say to my friends and colleagues in the US, you are the US, you have 10. You are Europe, you have 15. We in Asia, we have 40. And in the Philippines, we have six. And I really, what I really love about it is the way they've all agreed to cohesively work together in the spirit of cooperation. And of course, open finance is going to be a very important narrative on the last day. Each of the days will be receiving a special delegation. Singapore is in focus on the first day, Indonesia on the second, Central Europe, Hungary, and Central Europe, Hungary, Central Asia on the third, and of course, startup capital, startup nation, which is the Levant region led by Israel. So I'm not going to go through um, anymore the rest of the agenda, but really we're pushing through an ASEAN narrative where we hope that today will usher in a deeper cooperation between Cambodia and the Philippines. So we'll see you both in Manila for the inaugural Philippine FinTech Festival. And of course, we'll see you all in CamTech sometime in November. On this note, before I turn it over to the host, may we kindly ask if you could uh, run a very short video on the festival. Mabuhay. The ASEAN economy is currently valued at over 3 trillion US dollars. With a population of over 600 million people, ASEAN is becoming the fourth largest economy in the world due to the impact technology has had in shaping cross-border collaboration and business in the region. The Philippines has become one of the fastest growing adopters of technology in the world. This has broadened the scope of local SMEs to engage in cross-border business. This is the first time the Philippine legacy brands are teching up, and we are bringing together industry leaders across various verticals to help solve the country's problems through tech. ASEAN is setting the pace as a global leader for technology and innovation, with a string of events in Cambodia, Thailand, Philippines, and Singapore that will dictate the future of our digital economy. This all begins in October at the Digital Filipinas Festival. The Digital Filipinas Festival is a week-long summit that will host the inaugural Philippine Fintech Festival and the World Fintech Festival Philippines, jointly with Elevandi, a non-profit by the Monetary Authority of Singapore and the organizers of the Singapore Fintech Festival. We are going beyond fintech by bringing together ASEAN traditions, legacies, government leaders, technologists, investors, and startups into an ecosystem that connects local and regional industries through tech. For technologists, 
It's the opportunity to share their breakthroughs with the leaders shaping local and regional industries. For investors, this is a chance to discover innovative solutions to the challenges millions across ASEAN face today. For the government, it's the platform to understand policies that will define digital economies in the future. And for public attendees, it's the venue where they can meet, learn from, and be inspired by a host of leaders and innovators in person. The Philippine Fintech Festival and the World Fintech Festival Philippines will lay the foundation for cross-border collaboration, business, and partnerships through scheduled meetups between regional neobanks and wallets, an event on AI and blockchain, a hackathon on Web 3.0 executions, and sustainable finance with the Monetary Authority of Singapore and Oliver Wyman. Additional hackathons on InsurTech, EnterTech, and various industries. The Philippine pilot launch of the SME Digitalization Program through the SME Financial Empowerment Program with India, Ghana, and Singapore. The launch of trade associations for health tech, insure tech, mark tech, reg tech, prop tech, and other relevant industry groups. Together, let's build a digital Filipina through open finance, through e-commerce, through edge tech, through fintech, the buhay ang digital Philippines. Let's build a digital Filipinas together. Shape the digital economy. Join us as we bring you the first leg in a tech-led journey across the ASEAN region. Join the Digital Filipinas Festival as we bring you the World Fintech Festival Philippines and the Philippine Fintech Festival this October. Thank you so much, Amor. And again, I would like to invite everyone to the Philippine Fintech Festival this October 17 to 21 at the Green Sun Makati, the home of Digital Filipinas. Fintech has already changed the way people live and do business, especially in the banking sector. It is transforming the financial services sector by providing new products and solutions for consumers, whether it's about making payments, storing funds, investing, or even buying products. And as we move towards a truly digital world, opening many opportunities for the financial services ecosystem to provide new secure services is a fundamental part of every step of this journey. Now let's all welcome our keynote speaker who has over 21 years of experience with spanning credit cards, consumer banking, and insurance as functional leader and CEO. He has brought about transformative changes in processes and products with significant impact on margins, margins and has reveled in diverse business experience across geographies and cultures. Calling on the stage is the board member of CAF and the CEO of Prudential Cambodia Life Insurance, Mr. Sanjay Chakrabarty. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me. Uh, very happy to be here. Um, we in Prudential, we've been associated with the fintech journey across markets for a while now. Um, as you know, um, Singapore Fintech Festival and then Camp Tech and so on. Uh, and, and we do it because uh, we feel that for us, for the business to survive, to grow, to be relevant to the communities, um, and, and Prudential is a very old company, 175 years old. For, so for us uh, to continue to be relevant uh, in the way we do business, uh, fintech is absolutely core to our proposition, to our business model, to our sales model. And uh, through CAFT in Cambodia, uh, we have been able to uh, sort of support uh, this endeavor uh, that Thomas and others have, uh, have been so good in taking forward. Um, our primary focus has been um, to build capacity in the country. Uh, we have uh, got initiatives around uh, building out sandboxes where uh, Cambodian companies have participated uh, we have, uh, in fact, Prudential has launched an insurance selling machine recently um, and things like that, which sort of drive financial inclusion. And that sort of dovetails very well uh, with uh, one of the biggest innovation in Cambodia, which I think Thomas will touch upon at some point, which is Bakong, the uh, uh, interoperability of uh, payments platforms, the interconnectivity, all of that uh, driven through Bakong, which is just incredible. Um, so now, if you look at uh, the financial needs of, of, of retail customers, right? You have 
uh, people uh, who would need to make payments and then people who would need to save or, or, or borrow. And then you have protection and investment. So protection and investment, which is where insurance comes in, is a bit further up in the value chain. And that sort of, that sort of kicks in once the fundamentals of payments uh, and, and, and savings are sorted out. And Cambodia uh, is, is there. Uh, Cambodia it provides a tremendous platform for us to build on. Uh, the habits of people are changing rapidly. There is far more trust in doing transaction digitally. Um, so all of that um, sets the stage uh, for businesses such as ours uh, and also um, the, the financial industry to grow at an exponential rate in a very, very different way. Um, so Prudential is very happy to do its part in driving this, in being part of this uh, incredible, uh, incredible journey. Uh, and, uh, and, and and frankly, we consider ourselves uh, fortunate uh, to have been around at a time uh, where we can seize this opportunity uh, that will help us grow the industry, but also help us contribute to the community in which we operate in a very, very different way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanjay Chakrabarty for that very insightful presentation that I'm certain many of our audiences across the region of Asia have learned from. And ultimately, the early adoption of technological innovation is the key to remaining competitive in today's digital environment. Next, to give us an overview of the tech ecosystem in Cambodia, here with us today, as well as a serial entrepreneur from across startups and corporate communities, founder, executive, board, and other strategic positions experience in various companies. Combining over 15 years of experience from fintech, investments, technology, finance, and other background by renowned brands such as PPay, FWD Insurance, CAF, DQD, Consulting, Jalat, IG Group, Brixy Group, as well as 500 Global, 500 Startups, and others. Let's all welcome Mr. Tomas Pokorni, the Board Secretary General of CAF, CEO of Pipe, and founder of Brixy Group, to give us an overview. Hi, good, good morning, everyone. It's a it's pleasure uh, actually being here and have opportunity to share a little bit about uh, Cambodian ecosystem. Uh, first of all, uh, it's actually also a big pleasure for Cambodia itself and for CAF to uh, be part of this bigger movement, as Amor was mentioning, right? Uh, ASEAN is 600 million people community, where uh, countries like Cambodia, which we have 17 million people, roughly of population, were always playing more or less alone because we didn't have really that connective piece. And it's first year where it's really extremely uh, positive and I think uh, looking forward with positive outlook to see that uh, all of our associations working together to uh, interconnect and to uh, bolster that financial inclusion across, across the region that's obviously evolving I would say faster than any other region across the world and testament for uh, many of foreigner uh, foreigners being actually part of the ecosystem myself from Europe and many uh, many other uh, players within uh, within ASEAN uh, being from Europe USA and, and elsewhere is a testament to that that ASEAN is evolving much faster than the rest of the rest of the world at least at, at this stage a uh, little bit on Cambodia I think that uh, we coming from very uh, challenging beginnings where 80 percent of the population uh, is uh, underbanked uh, and uh, starting starting pretty much in uh, year 2017 2018 that fintech ecosystem completely uh, completely changed and uh, it was driven by a uh, push towards the uh, partnership within the uh, fintech uh, fintech community uh, we had the strong group of fintech players and strong group of banking institutions and financial institutions. Cambodia with a population of 16, 17 million people had more than uh, 140 financial institutions. And all of us were competing pretty much towards the same banked uh, segment of the population. Uh, 
In 2020, where National Bank came up with the concept of interconnectivity measures called Baklong, which is blockchain-based, uh, I would say predecessor of digital currencies in the future, uh, things start slightly shifting the ties. Now, every financial institution who is part of that initiative is connected, and everybody is essentially automatically partnering with each other. Uh, there is no interconnectivity issues. There is no need to sign separate partnerships agreements. Everybody is playing on the same uh, level playing field. And uh, what that brought is that just in 2021, uh, through Bacom itself, they will process more than $2.3 billion uh, in transactions value uh, across uh, 5.7 uh, million transactions. Imagine for countries of our size, uh, how much this means. Uh, so going forward, where I would hope that Cambodia can play a uh, role is as a dual currency based economy, we have USD and both Cambodian real as a recognized currencies in the country, that uh, despite our size, we hopefully can become the trading and financial partners for the rest of the region, for ASEAN to connect with the rest of the globe. Uh, supported by our bigger brothers and sisters, including uh, including Philippines. So I, I look forward really for years uh, 2023 onward, because I think this fintech uh, movement that our partnerships together will really aid the both private and government sectors cooperation and partnerships. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to share, share the floor with uh, amazing speakers and uh, amazing panel. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. And now that we've had an overview of the ecosystem in Cambodia, let's now move on to our panel discussion to know more about how we can learn from each other. To start off, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our panel for today. Our first panelist is a seasoned litigation and corporate lawyer who is known for his no-nonsense work ethics and professionalism. A supervising lawyer at the University of the Philippines College of Law, Office of Legal Aid, and a lecturer and teacher at the College of Law of the New Era University. Let us all welcome Attorney Jose Antonio Aliling, the Managing and Senior Partner of Jose Antonio Aliling and Associates, and the Chairman of ActCube Legal Support Incorporated. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sir, Sir Jan. <laughs> Next, our second panelist has extensive global experience and has held various corporate leadership and management roles in diverse industries, such as telecoms, financial services, and technology. Prior to joining the Gokongwe group of companies, Jojo was CEO of Wing Cambodia, a pioneering mobile financial institution that has successfully brought the unbanked into Cambodia's mainstream financial industry. Let us please call on stage Mr. Dojo Malolos, the co-founder and chairman of GoTime Bank. Hi, um, good morning to everybody. Happy to be here and thank you for having me in this uh, panel. Thank you, Sir Dojo. As part of the panel, of course, let's welcome back Mr. Thomas Pokorny, the board secretary general of CAF, CEO of Pipe and founder of Briggs Group. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Mr. Thomas. Also joining the panel, let's welcome again Mr. Sanjay Chakrabarty, board member of CAF and the CEO of Prudential Cambodia Life Insurance. Hi, hello. Hi, Mr. Sanjay. And finally, to moderate this panel of leaders is Mr. Diego Ramos, consultant of Geyser McLaughlin. Welcome, Diego. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, hi gentlemen, good morning. And I'm thrilled to have you and thank you for joining us uh, uh, this morning. I know it's a holiday in Cambodia. Thank you very much for taking time to join us here in the Philippines. Thank you, Sanjay, Jojo, thank you. Oh, so let's start the day with some possible good news. Um, Jojo needs to ju just jump out by 11.45. Just wanna respect that and then just throw the first question to you, Jojo. Jojo. Things that makes us work harder, things that makes us inspire us to do more, do good. Can you share your first winning story when you started Go Time Bank here in the Philippines? Something that you know, I'm doing the right thing and let's just go for it. We'd love to hear that. 
Well, the, the, the story is really, uh, the story is really um, you know, coming, starting from, from my stint in Cambodia. I think, I think uh, Thomas and uh, Sanjay probably uh, were witnesses to how, uh, as, as Thomas mentioned earlier, the, the financial services landscape had really transformed heavily through the leadership of Wing and, of course, uh, uh, you know that, that that was just the precursor of the setting up of the CAF, uh, where you know we, we gathered all of the we gathered all the fintechs that were upcoming then. So uh, we, we we basically um, created a new model in ASEAN relative to how we really bank and bank. Uh, we you know Wing was able to uh, process transactions uh, that are bigger than the bigger than the GDP of the country. Uh, and uh, that, uh, you know, uh, basically says how, how much of the, uh, how much of the uh, unbanked have really participated in, in, in the mainstream financial services. And that was just using, you know, uh, hybrid technology, you know, we bring all, we brought all the transactions to the, to the agents that were basically doing all the digital transactions. And, and that paved the way for uh, my, you know, my my current uh, uh, company right now to to tell me and ask me you should do that in the Philippines because you know what, what, what you have done in Cambodia has never been done in the Philippines, particularly banking and bank. Right, we have GCash and Paymaya. I was the former CEO of Paymaya also before I went back to uh, to, to Cambodia. It was called Smart Money then, if you remember uh, Jago and uh, yes. Tony John, uh, and then. Uh, uh, when I came back here, the objective was that, you know, why don't you set up a digital bank for the Gokong Week group of companies, right? And uh, that was my first objective. I came back 2019. And then in two years' time, we were able to get a license for a digital bank. Uh, thanks, of course, to uh, the role that I had, because I was also the CEO of uh, the Gokong Way Group's uh, venture capital company called JG Debt. It's a $100 million company that uh, allowed me to put an investment on time in South Africa, uh, which basically uh, uh, gave us about 5% of ownership in that company and brought them to the Philippines uh, to form the joint venture of the digital company called GoTime. So we're, we're, we're launching GoTime. Yeah, we're launching GoTime in two weeks' time. Um, and we're very, very excited about the prospects of uh, you know, uh, instituting a different type of digital banking. Very, very much similar to what I did in Cambodia. We're in we will attack the retail first. You know, it's digital, but it's hybrid. We're going to bring customers to supermarkets, drugstores, uh, uh, agents, sorry, sorry stores, and let them do this, those their digital transactions through those com uh, through those uh, merchants. We're very very excited because uh, uh, we are one of six digital companies uh, 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 being brought to the market, uh, being approved, uh, being given a license by BSP. But we're more excited about uh, the impact that we we know we will be having because uh, you know we are quite differentiated from the rest of all of the digital banks. Where in you know everybody's trying to you know give six percent yeah. interest. That's and, yeah, but Jojo, six percent interest. That's Jojo. Any reference on you? What's the in terms of market adoption? How is the Philippines faring um, to the rest of the, the region or even Cambodia in specific in terms of adoption? Um, is there a close uh, a close um, run? Well, it's uh, globally, it's, it's it's the adoption is around twenty five to thirty percent, right? So, so the Philippines right Average. now, even yeah, even even GCash and uh, even GCash and uh, uh, and PayMaya would go would, would go along that route. But in Cambodia, it's quite different because adoption is defined differently, right? So. Uh, PayPay, which which launched before, had a different type of product. That's why you know, maybe they were hovering around that uh, same level. However, um, Wing was attacking it differently because they were talking about consumers who were going to the agents and do the digital transactions, right? Not necessarily on the app, but actually giving that on on, on that uh, on, on those uh, agents. So that is that's quite a high level of uh, high level of uh, adoption. In the 8,500 uh, agents that we had in Cambodia, approximately 85 to 90 percent were really active, doing 80, 80, 80 transactions a day by way of a digital transaction or at least uh, you know, payment transactions uh, per agent. Per agent, huh? not 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 per is, person, is it because per of agent. culture? 
is it is it just no, it's, because, it's because yeah it's because yeah, it's because of the model that we have brought in because instead of people instead of enjoining people to use the phone to do transactions they're quite they're quite you know they, they don't they don't trust themselves in sending money because they might make a mistake and they won't be able to get their money back so they entrust it to, to the agents but that was the precursor of the behavior that we did uh, in, in due time we were able to bring customers to to, to the app itself but I think I think that's the general trend, and um, uh, in the Philippines it was the same. Except if, if not for the pandemic, people wouldn't have started using GCash or or or, or PayMaya, right, or Maya Bank. So guilty. That's true. That's true. Sanjay, um, well, that's a that's a very very deep uh, insight comparison. I just want to check with Sanjay having one of the most important role in CAF. So how do you connect uh, different types of ecosystems, business, tech, and non tech? private and public and put them all in say in a basket of your unified shared and connected cohesive um, voice and message um, how are you able to put this together uh, what's your th what's your th secret you. uh, very good question so uh, you know the example that Jojo had about being actually I'm going to use that as a template uh, it's a hybrid model where you use the digital tools uh, but they're essentially uh, focused at enhancing customer experience, or whatever the need is. Uh, in our case, for insurance, um, insurance is still sort of sold. It's not bought, right? So uh, it is uh, still somebody uh, going and having a conversation uh, with the, the customer at the end of the day. Um, so we have been able to operationalize and deploy a whole suite of digital products. Uh, for example, uh, when a customer is in a conversation with agents, can he access all the product information? Do you have everything at your fingertips? Uh, can you have uh, co-browsing uh, platforms where you can actually do remote selling of complicated products, relatively speaking? Uh, and then all the way down where you're selling very simple products like a personal accident, which you can just buy uh, off a machine uh, with the touch of a button, right? So um, so for, for, for us, ecosystems uh, that cover different financial needs, uh, be it payments, or savings, or uh, whatever it is, uh, lending, investment protection, uh, for us, the, the idea is to get um, the, the, the product that you want to sell embedded in the customer's journey and, and not sort of innovate for the sake of innovation. Sanjay, I just want to pull your leg. Potential um, is my preferred insurance for my car. Years back. Um, Jojo, I, I know you needed to go uh, and do some more important things. Uh, I just want to ask you more before you go. Um, um, do you think we have just six and uh, there's a, a, a memo to, from the BSP to, to halt it just because they need to backtrack on process. Do you think the Philippines has room for more, uh, for a space for more digital banks coming in? Do you think we can all thrive with 10, 12 and still, um, you know, uh, be happy all together as a community? You think? Have you, do you think we have enough market? To no, no. I, 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 I think, I think uh, the wisdom of the BSP, the central bank, in uh, limiting the uh, license to six will allow us to witness that there's going to be just about two to three companies which will be able okay. to fill in that gap right. that the commercial when banks and other, six, yeah. Yeah, and the other fintech players are able to do. Well, uh, and the main reason for that is that you know we, we, we've had our quest for financial inclusion for quite some time, right? So GCAS has been there for about 17, 18 years. PayMaya through Smart Money has been there for about 24 years. And it's only now that they're really picking up. And a lot of companies are starting to you know, go digital. So I think uh, there's going to be two or three very uh, important players in the digital banking sector. There's going, to be prob uh, there's going to be probably room for one or two, but that will displace the the other two or three in the six that has been given the licenses. I trust you. Yeah. Before you go, Jojo, can you invite them to join the PFS? Well, yeah. Uh, again, again, my, my role here is to really, uh, you know, showcase, uh, uh, you know, uh, the PFF as a, a venue by which uh, our counterparts, you know, you, you, 
Thomas uh, used the word brothers, our, our relatives in, uh, in ASEAN relative to learning from the Philippines. I'm a very, very huge witness to uh, the transformation that has gone to the Philippines through the past three years that has, I have been here through the leadership of Digital Filipinas and through the leadership of uh, people like um, Amor, who are basically very, very passionate about uh, going, uh, going global and going borderless in terms of uh, uh, sharing experiences and successes. It's really going to be uh, the showcase uh, and highlighted in this PFF. So uh, we, uh, you know, the, the members of the community that power uh, digital transformation and success in the Philippines are, are inviting everybody to participate in this and uh, form a relationship that we can also nurture to support other countries which might need our um, you know, assistance in terms of developing a, a really, really, a really, truly global uh, fintech uh, success experience. So uh, welcome to the club and uh, looking forward to having more conversations with you and apologies that I, I you know, uh, we just have some, some, some emergency uh, here and then I need to address some of them. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jojo. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, nice, nice seeing thanks, you again. Thanks, Thomas, Jojo. And Sandy. Nice seeing you again. Right. He doesn't know that I missed big time for years now. Anyway, um, um, going back to our gentleman, I have to put like a read the pause when I got an, uh, um, an instruction uh, for him to leave early. So we have all the time and um, we, we now uh, enjoy the rest of the time. Um, Thomas, I'd like to throw this question to you because um, I'm sure um, we share the same burden when we started. So what were your major challenges when, as a board, uh, as in your role with CAP, what were your major challenges? And when you overcome it, um, how did it really make an impact to, to the community? I mean, how, how, what's your journey look, how, what does your journey look like there in Cambodia? Uh, I presume you, you mean from the FinTech Association perspective, yes, right? So yeah. uh, I, I would say that, you know, we are not yet out of uh, out of deep waters. It's still work in progress, right? So uh, Cambodian FinTech sector, as well as our association is still evolving. But uh, initially the main challenge was, uh, was the need, right? Because we, we knew, and I'll get to it, why it's needed in an association like ours and uh, not association itself, but what we do, why it is needed. But uh, Cambodia, similar to FinTech ecosystem, has a lot of chamber of commerce, has a lot of associations. And uh, you know, everybody uh, tends to start these for various reasons, right? And then you have a very crowded market where everybody's organizing networking events. That's very standardized, you know, right. uh, chamber of right. commerce approach, right? Oh, and our aim was really to consolidate the fintech ecosystem that until that point didn't have much voice, right? There, there were payment service institutions, there were uh, fintech technology players, there are insurance uh, in, uh, organizations, they have their own association as well, but they're all focusing on the, uh, you know, their own individual sectors, right? So insurance for insurance, banking is for banking, uh, right. American chamber is for American businesses and American chamber of uh, commerce activities. There for us, it was, let's give the fintech voice and let's showcase why the fintech, the combination of the finance technology, right, is important from the perspective of financial inclusion, from the perspective of deepening the financial literacy across mass market population, right? And from the perspective of establishing dialogue between innovation, which often tends to be disruptive and misunderstood at times, right? And the legacy side that's often needed because you need regulations, you need legacies uh, in certain elements, at least, uh, you know, th that gives you the stability in the financial ecosystem. So for us, the finding that voice and showing people and showing industry that voice is needed, uh, FinTech deserves uh, its own voice, uh, its own dialogue with both private and public sector. Uh, that, that was our main, uh, main mission and main challenge at the same time that we are still overcoming, right? Kind of giving that voice to not just us, people, players, that in FinTech. So that, that's uh, in, in nutshell, I think. But, but Sanjay and Thomas, what was your motive for starting or even joining uh, CAF? Was there something that happened? Is it something incidental that you were, uh, uh, like say you put up a vision of putting up people together? What was, is there something that happened or by interest or by need for a community to connect? What was that? I can speak for myself. So if you look at, um, 
you look at Cambodia, uh, the population density in Cambodia is very, very low. It's a sparsely populated country. It's a pretty big country. Uh, uh, and there are no, you know, massive big cities like we have in India. So the biggest city here would be two, three million people. So if you're talking about accessing huge swathes of population in one go, uh, and if you're committed to driving financial inclusion, then uh, digital uh, platforms is fundamental uh, to distribution. Now, once you have sorted this out in your mind, then you're talking about building products that can be distributed using digital platforms, right? And, and it sort of follows from there all the way up. And then you're talking about capability building, capacity building. So, so that's where you say, okay, so now you need to be part of, a, part of an association, part of a platform where you can drive this in terms of capacity and capability, in terms of building out ecosystems, in terms of having strategic partners and products that work for you, uh, build it around Prudential. So for, for us, uh, that was the thought process uh, behind being uh, a, a, a key player in CAFT. Yeah, yes. Um, but um, um, that kind of input, attorney as a lawyer, uh, I always known him as a very thorough lawyer, very thorough and very uh, open to discussion. I love our conversations always. Attorney, um, are, are you ever tempted, uh, if you like a wish list, are you ever tempted to intervene in terms of regulatory uh, just to advance the digital technology adoption in the Philippines? Uh, do you find yourself like gritting on putting on or subjecting yourself for an agenda, passing on an agenda for policies to happen? Uh, Jag, I'm an advocate for uh, digital transformation as a tool for inclusion and uh, you know access. I think Thomas, Sanjay, and Jojo has been saying it that you know we are here because we want access for people who are unbanked. We want inclusion for people who have not been uh, giving this benefits. No? So the uh, the, digitization, the digitization of economy you know, creates some benefits because it fuels job opportunities, economic growth. And more, more importantly, access to everyone. It also creates uh, a lot of so sociological changes so, because how it influences how people interact with each other. So government has to create a safe environment for the digital economy to grow. First of all, uh, it has to show that it can protect the ecosystem. It can give confidence in the ecosystem by giving protection. It also has to provide incentives and investments, investment opportunities so that people will buy in into that digital economy and ecosystem. Um, in particular, no, to be very specific of the ask that we want to have from government is that we want to strengthen the cybersecurity laws no, that we have. We have existing ones, but we want the implementation of it to be stronger and easier. No? We also want to also increase anti-cybercrime laws no, so that we feel safe in this digital economy. We also want to improve tax treaties because these are cross-border transactions that we don't want to be uh, surprised no, with the tax impact just because it was not uh, taken care of. So these are some of the things that uh, we want government to intervene with government so that we can have a seamless growth in this uh, digital economy. Thank you, Jago. That's true, attorney. But just to clarify, I just want to benchmark together with um, like Cambodia. Uh, attorney, does our tax law apply like can do like a backtrack kind of thing in terms of application or when the law has passed, it has to move on there from there on. Um, our tax, our the construct of our constitution, our tax law. As as a general rule, all tax changes has to apply prospectively. Uh, prospectively. but of course, the government and sometimes as long as it doesn't uh, bring about damage, it can do some retroactive applications. Yeah, that's true. How, how about in Cambodia? Does this uh, uh, tax law apply this way? There are tax treaties between ASEAN countries, and this is actually the good thing about the ASEAN integration, there's awesome. continued discussions between our governments here. Awesome, awesome. Nice. Um, well, um, um, Thomas, um, in terms of, um, do, you any, do you see any synergy? Um, what, what do you think is the best synergy that you see between the Philippines and Cambodia working together? Just like for, for the sake of a pep talk, um, any synergy that you see that we can like, start on and just move on and expand from there? Um, 
so far from your engagement with with us? Well, well I think that you know if we explore absolutely all of them, we would not end this call today. It, it would be for probably a seminar for two two days discussion. But yeah, what uh, what is what is really awesome between Cambodia and the Philippines is that. Uh, um, Filipino overseas foreign workers are actually quite prominent in, in, uh, in Cambodian uh, sector, both in outsourcing and manufacturing. So uh, where does it bring you is in uh, testing of innovative use cases of money remittances. And I don't mean money remittances in the traditional sector that we already have, right? But uh, since Cambodia now has the uh, BACOM, which is interoperability engine based on blockchain, uh, and Philippines are actually one of the strongest in the region in terms of blockchain and cryptocurrencies and you know digital currencies overall. I definitely think there is some potential for the uh, sandbox cooperation of the blockchain interoper interoperability engine, right? There, I, ideally, when you think about it, we shouldn't have to uh, be you know selecting which providers will conduct our financial transactions uh, and being limited to one or two but it should be really fully open and accessible to everybody uh, in transparent way you know semi decentralized meaning you can really choose absolutely anyone uh, and running on the backing uh, of uh, regulators, right? So in Cambodia, we have that uh, blockchain infrastructure. In the Philippines, you might be building also yours. So I think that connectivity between those two countries can uh, start among us and then give kind of example for the rest of the uh, rest of the ASEAN. That is true. That is true. Take some some just people, just some drive to do it and start it. Yeah. Then Sanjay, um, I just move on to a different topic. Um, in, term, in terms of intratech, uh, where do you focus on the middleware in terms of embedded um, blockchain or are you on the consumer side in terms of its market expansion, consumer acquisition? Where do you usually thrive? So intratech is obviously a very wide uh, field and uh, we are one of the one of the leading players in InsurTech. Uh, which is why our association as insurance company, we are not a payments company, we are not a digital bank, and yet uh, we are deeply embedded in the fintech platform across ASEAN. Uh, and, and that's because we believe that this is how we can access <clears throat> a huge segment of people and we can provide an experience, we can provide solutions uh, that are far more richer than the traditional insurance platform. Uh, for example, you know, our health tech uh, platforms where you can uh, look at your um, symptom checkers with the touch of a button on your phone, um, the mental, uh, mental health, uh, the wellness, the well-being platforms, uh, all of that uh, is part of the InsurTech story. And it's, it's still a very small part, so to say, because we have a long way to go. And of course, distribution, sales, fulfillment, um, making sure that the customers are empowered, uh, reducing turnaround time for selling a product, reducing turnaround time for making a claim, right? So we are the biggest, uh, we are number one uh, insurance company. And I'm very proud to say this in terms of claims payment in Cambodia and, and actually in many other Congratulations. Markets. Thank you. Uh, it's one metric that really matters, right? And, and we are very good at automating for our customers on how they log in their request for claims. So, so for us, InsurTech is not a separate vertical. It is integrated. It's embedded in our day-to-day uh, -day business in everything we do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Thomas, uh, John, um, is there anything in your plate now that you're working on in terms of, let's say, a proposition for uh, for better adoption in this industry uh, that you that we think are left uh, a stone left unturned and uh, a plate left untouched. If there's something you're you're just delaying or putting up and sit there and just getting ready for the right time. What is that? John, feel uh, free to go first. Thomas, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Right now, we're trying to. Uh, Cooperate with government no, to make the to make the processes uh, very efficient. No? We actually laud the government for its effort with the SEC, how they've uh, done it not to become very very efficient, and we hope that this uh, process uh, will be followed with uh, other government agencies so that the ease of doing business here uh, improves uh, further. I I would say that we've improved since since before the the pre pandemic times. We improved probably five hundred percent, you know, in terms of how SEC has done. 
its work and I'm hoping that it will also be mirrored in other government agencies. Thank you. Yes. Thomas? Uh, I, I think on our side, and again, I would have on the plate to like specifically for Cambodia various things, uh, in, including, for example, P2P side, digital lending, crowdfunding, and so on and so forth. Uh, but one thing that I like what uh, John was mentioning, uh, from the regulatory perspective. And I think that no ASEAN nation, and I'm happy to see that the uh, Philippines are heading that way, really establish properly functioning sandbox, right? Ideally, if you want to go the way that uh, you don't just recognize crypto as only decentralized ventures and blockchain as only decentralized ventures, you need to then create a functional sandbox environment where everybody, even unregistered startups, guy with idea from the street will be able to go register on the fly, test this idea, and if it works, then go through the registration process. If, you know, startups are forced to complicated registrations and, uh, you know, regulatory compliance before they are even able to test the ideas or then being punished for running it in unregulated space, then, you know, we will never innovate substantially enough to catch up with the rest of the world. So I think properly functioning ASEAN sandbox not just Cambodian sandbox, but really ASEAN sandbox for innovation and for startups is something that we haven't yet figured it out. But I think we have potential to do it because ASEAN is more flexible when it comes to uh, you know deployment of these solutions, but it's not there yet. So I think definitely this one should be effort of all those fintech associations you know to push to push forward. That is true. That's true. I think uh, the best person to speak about this and share as just an insight, uh, make you like feel more confident is a more She's one um, vo big voice proponent in like um, uh, uh, pushing the industry and speaking to government and polarizing the industry and overcome the challenges on that. So um, for a, a time with Amar would be the best I, I, I can see. Attorney, um, you mentioned about um, uh, ease of doing business. Uh, hold on, Thomas and Sanjay. Made the good news of this law is that this law has two teeth, both admin and criminal punishment for government not to answer or deny uh, or delay for your proposal. The best law ever that the, our former government has ever passed. Nothing tops that. Um, that's one thing the Philippines is proud of. Um, Attorney Jan, as we close, can you possibly highlight on that and uh, invite everyone to join the PFF? Okay. So, uh, Jag is right. In 2018, the, the Duterte government was actually very committed to improve the ease of doing business. And, you know, I've been working, uh, I've been doing this work for the last 15 years. I was actually very skeptic no, that I don't think it will happen. But the pandemic has accelerated how things are done. Uh, it's like a miracle for us uh, who do government, uh, government relations work. Uh, we already have Citizens Charter, very comprehensive websites of government agencies where all the requirements are uh, complete and, you know, zero contact policies, everything's being done online. And we see it every day, you know, that the, the government is really committed to open up and make Philippines a very uh, friendly business, uh, business friendly environment. No? So we invite you know, everyone to also try to invest here in the Philippines, try to do business. We, we've come a long way, you know, and uh, I think the PFF... Uh, this coming October 7th, the week of October 17th will be a good opportunity to meet with people do, who will help you integrate and come come uh, invest in us. No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tony John. So to, to top it all, uh, we are putting up a uh, like an access code for your people to come over to the Philippines and visit. I'm hoping to see you as well. For uh, for code, um, access code, it's, uh, oh, let's flash it, it's Cambodia, XPFF, am I correct? Oh, let's see. Stashing, is it? So Sanjay and Thomas, and of course, everyone else who's here now, please share this one. There's just fine print to it. Uh, um, so please follow the instructions. Anyway, um, that's right. Cambodia XPFF. Ooh, just I'm trying to wing it. I'm correct. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So these are gifts. The people of Cambodia and my friends in Siam Reap. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. And gentlemen, there's no other. Thank you very much. My, my heart is filled. And 
to all the speakers here for sharing the knowledge about how we can all work together towards new innovation to provide customer experience, re-engineer customer experience, services and cross-border collaborations in the open finance and fintech landscape, and how we can play a greater role in backing up the Philippines, Cambodia, and the ASEAN. And thank you. We would like everyone to come to the Philippines, join us for the PFF by clicking on the code Cambodia at PFF. Again, gentlemen, thank you very much. And this is Digital Filipinas FinTech Festival Road to the Festival. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.